Praise Jesus. Church. I'm glad we're informal enough to laugh and tell jokes and rib one another and yes. make fun of Frank Warren and Amen. all the things that we can do. By the way, I want to commend Brother Nelson. None of you I know observe this, but I did. Sitting up here, I observed some things that you don't observe. Uh, our ushers uh, went down the aisle and collected offering as usual. Walked right out the door. Brother Nelson was over there waving a check or some money or something, trying to give an offering. They just passed right on by and went on to the back. And Brother Nelson chased them down. He went around. And, how many people do you know that would chase people down to give an offering? Uh, there, there's not many of them, I'll bet you. I know some of you wouldn't do it. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Nelson. He's giving, giving man. My hugging buddy. He, he loves to give. So we appreciate you, Brother Nelson. Thanks. I've got a question for you this morning. And I don't want you to just quickly answer this question in your heart or in your mind or with your mouth if you want to. But I want you to ponder this question. I'm going to ask the question. And what I actually want you to do when I ask this question, I want you to see la. Amen. I want you to see la. How many of you know what that means? You know, there are many verses in the book of Psalms that end with the word Selah. S-E-L-A-H. Selah. How many of you know what Selah means? Selah literally, biblically means stop and think on that a while. Stop and ponder that. Stop and think on that a while. In modern day vernacular, we'd say, stop and chew on that a while. Amen. That's what it literally means. Stop and think about it. Stop and chew on that a while. It means give it some contemplation. Don't just glibly answer the question, but think about it. Ponder it in your heart. Chew on it for a while. Here's the question. What kind of Christian are you? Selah. Think about it. What kind of Christian are you? Are you a hope so, think so, maybe so Christian? Are you a hope so? You hope that what you've learned and what you've been taught, according to the Bible, is right? That you think some of it may not be exactly the way you understood it or exactly the way some preacher preached it? Do you think so, or hope so, maybe so? Are you that kind of Christian? Are you the kind of Christian we're going to talk about this morning? I call it the can-do Christian. The can-do Christian. This was my dad's life verse. If you walked into my dad's office, and as most of you know, my dad was a pastor 55 and a half years. If you walked in the pastor study where my dad was pastor, you'd see a little placard on his desk that said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That was my dad's life verse. I used it at my dad's funeral. I used it as the text for my funeral message for my dad. It's found in Philippians 4.13. If you want to turn there, it's just one single verse, short verse. But oh, what a powerful short verse. Listen to what the Bible says in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You talk about a verse loaded with truth. There's a verse loaded with truth. What do we find in this verse? First of all, we find a personal promise. We find a personal promise. Paul said, I, I can do all things. Do you, when you read the Bible, do you personalize it? Do you put yourself in the place of, and we've used this illustration multitudes of times. Let's say you're reading again John 3.16 or you're quoting John 3.16. 
Instead of saying, for God so loved the world, put your name there. Personalize it. If I was saying it, I'd say, for God so loved Mickey Fugit that he gave his only begotten son. Make the Bible personal to you. The, the promises of God in the Bible, uh, according to the word, are yea and amen to you, to, to me, to whoever's reading it. It's yea and amen to you. In other words, you can put it in the bank. You can count on it because it's God's word and God's word doesn't change. Society might change. You know, all kinds of things may change around you in the world. But God's word doesn't change. The psalmist said, Thy word, O Lord, is settled forever in heaven. Book of Revelation tells us, Don't you take away from it. Don't you add to it. It's God's complete and total word. It's God's truth without any mixture of error whatsoever. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you live like you believe it? It's a personal promise. I can do all things. Bring the Bible to you individually. Make it personal to you and it'll make a difference in your life. Not only will you find here a personal promise, but we find a powerful prospect. A powerful prospect. What's the prospect? I can do. I can do. How many times have you caught yourself saying, I can't do that. I can't, I can't. I heard a Baptist preacher say one time, the can't's the worst disease ever got in the Baptist church. Oh, what do we need to do? Well, you know, we need some new facilities. Oh, we can't do that. Can't do that. We need a new project. We need it. Oh, we can't do that. Why not? Can't afford it. Hey, I, I got news for you folks. God ain't broke. If you're doing God's will, God's way, God will foot the bill. Let me tell you for a fact. I pastored a church, been there two and a half months, and the roof and ceiling of the church fell in. Somebody said, well, what did you have in the building fund? Nothing. We didn't have a building fund. Sitting there in the building and been deteriorating for years and years. You could walk in the building and you could see on the north wall a noticeable lean where there was construction failure. People wouldn't sit on that side of the building because they said, one of these days that's liable to fall in, so everybody sat over here. When it finally fell in, guess where it fell in? Right over here. <laughs> With enough force to just destroy pews. People would have been killed if it had been during time of service. But it happened in the wee hours of a morning on Saturday morning. And that Saturday morning later, we went in there and a bunch of me and other dumb men doing stupid things went in there and jerked up pews and hauled them down to the fellowship hall and put them in the fellowship hall so that we could meet down there while uh, they were repairing or building a new building. Everybody said for years, for years, that building had been like that since it was it was like 48 years old or something like that. For 48 years, that building sat there, and everybody said, you know, we need a new building. We need a new building, but we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't do it. Can't afford it. Can't do it. Well, when God forced the issue, guess what happened? Built a brand new, beautiful auditorium to seat 300 people. Paid for it in three years. Oh, but we can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. Are you a can't do it Christian? Or are you a can do Christian? We can do whatever God says we can do because God will take care of us and foot the bill if need be. We've seen it happen right here. Some of you that are newer don't know we're supposed to have to close the doors about three or four years ago. However long, how long ago was that, Gary? Gary keeps up with these things. About four years ago, things didn't pick up. We was getting ready to maybe close the doors. All of a sudden, there appeared a forty-something thousand dollar gift to the church. Out of the blue. Hey, God's not broke. God's got I, I got tickled, the preacher said, 
You know, the Bible says God's own, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Said he not only owns the cattle on a thousand hills, he owns the, owns the hills and the taters in the hills and the bugs on the taters. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Roger already quoted that this morning. Hey, God will take care of his children if he has to move heaven and earth. He did it in the wilderness when he sent manna from heaven. He sent quails from heaven. He sent it from heaven to take care of his children. God will take care of you. We sing it. We just don't believe it. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. It's a fact. He will. It's a powerful prospect. It's not only that. It's a permanent potential. A permanent potential. I can do what? All things. All things. That includes everything. That's a permanent thing. If it's all things, it's all things. Amen? The Bible says in Ephesians 5.20... Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when you talk about giving thanks, I've heard preachers get up and preach and quote 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which says what? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, right? In everything give thanks. I've heard preachers stand up and say... Now, I even heard my own father say it one time, and I corrected him. Now, I know it's not right to correct your father unless he's biblically incorrect, and I think it's okay then. I heard other preachers say it. I heard my own father say it. The Bible says, in everything give thanks, but it doesn't say give thanks for everything. And I just I said, what do you do with Ephesians 5.20? Giving thanks always for all things. Giving thanks always for all things. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you do about that? You say, well, I just don't believe you can give thanks in all things. Then, then apparently you don't believe the Bible. Because the Bible says you can. The Bible says you can be giving thanks always for all things. Yeah, but some are bad things. How do you know? God will take something you think is bad and turn it for good. Five people on our trip to St. Kitts to do mission work were killed in a plane crash. That's bad, people said. That's awful. That's tragedy. But God turned it around for good. My dad, for years, had wanted to go down and fund a library and start a school for young preacher boys there on St. Kitts Island, where he helped establish the first Baptist church on the island of St. Kitts. But he never was able to do it. Didn't have financial resources to do it till after the plane crash. My mother and dad both received $400,000 each settlement from that plane crash. That's $800,000. That's not too far from a million. Amen? My dad had the resources then. You know what he did? He went back to St. Kitts after he was in the hospital in ICU for 10 days in Puerto Rico and another 44 days in the hospital in Hendrick Medical Center in Abilene. He got well enough, even though he walked with a severe limp because he had sciatic nerve damage. He, he, he went back down, funded a library, and started a church for those preacher boys down there. Oh, it was bad when those people got killed, but God turned it around for good. You say, well, are you grateful for that plane crash? I'm not particularly grateful for it, but I can give God thanks for it. Through it, I got to go back to St. Thomas Island and do an island-wide crusade. You know what I'd experienced on St. Thomas before that as a U.S. Navy sailor? Hit the port and go to the nearest bar and get drunk till you can't stand up and go back to the ship. And God let me go down and restore those years that the canker worm and the caterpillar had eaten. And God let me preach a count, uh, uh, an island-wide crusade on St. Thomas Island and saw people come to Jesus on the very island where I'd been what I shouldn't have been. Praise God. What the potential. I can do all things. Then look at the perfect person. The perfect person through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. 
If it wasn't for him, I got news for you. If it wasn't for him, you know what you could do? Nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. You think Jesus told the truth? Then what do you think you can do without him? That's right. You can do exactly nothing without him. But with him, with him, listen, with him, all things are possible. There's nothing Jesus cannot do. God is God. And God can do whatever God wills and chooses to do just because he's God and you and the devil and all the demons in hell, all the unbelievers and agnostics in the world can't do one thing about it because God is God and above him there is none else. I can do all things through Christ, the perfect person. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know what that is? That's provided power. Provided power. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I, I know I've shared this illustration before, but I know you forgot it as soon as I said it. But I traveled in, in an evangelistic ministry, did revivals all over the country for five years, did 30 to 36 revivals a year all over the country for five years. And sometimes during the middle of a three or four week stretch of doing three or four meetings in a, in a row, I'd get tired and bone weary. And I'd be really nearly to the point of just giving up. And I was reminded by a fellow evangelist one time, when you get that way, just go to Isaiah 40, 31. Right. Claim the promise of God. It's become one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. What does it say in Isaiah 40, 31? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And in the middle of that week when I was just about ready to collapse and give up, I'd say that verse and it was like the Lord would give me a supernatural uh, input of energy and I'd just go for it. Not through me. I was ready to lay down and nap for about three days. But through Jesus Christ, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Are you a think so, hope so, maybe so Christian? Are you a can do Christian? Let me just ask you out of curiosity. What do you think we as a church ought to be doing? What do you think we ought to be doing? Let me ask you a question. Can we do it? Can we do it? Are we can-do Christians? Are we hope so, think so, maybe so Christians? I know beyond any shadow of a doubt why my dad took that as his life verse. Because he was told when he surrendered to the ministry when he was saved in his middle 20s, as a 28-year-old young farmer, when he was saved and surrendered to the ministry and sold out the farm and moved his family, already had two children, my sister and I, to Abilene, Texas, to start his education in Hardin-Simmons University. He had only gone to his sophomore year in high school, had to get a GED and start college. When he sold out the farm and left, his own daddy told him he was crazy. Everybody that knew him thought he was crazy because of what he did said, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. You'll be back on the farm within a year. You'll never make it. Well, he made it for 55 and a half years in the ministry. Very, very successful minister. You know why? He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And because of his testimony, 
That's why I'm where I am today. That's why God's allowed me to preach the gospel for over 51 years. Because my dad was a can-do Christian. And I want to be a can-do Christian like him. I want all of us to become can-do Christians and show the world what we can do as God's people. Amen. Let's stand together.